A man who is anti-pride. Not anti-gay pride, just anti-pride in general. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice we're going to manage. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. Handball, Brian. Shit, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So at the last minute, uh, Gina had sent over a trailer for a movie of the week. Dying to know if you're familiar with this. I was not. I don't think. It looks awesome. I love all movies of the week because they really do sort of encapsulate like where we were as a nation. This mm-hmm. is how we thought about things. This is our emphasis. This yeah. is how we, we this is creatively, this is how we put things yeah. together. But thematically, it was important. And in the late 70s, was child prostitution seemed to be kind of in vogue, laugh for lack of a better adjective. Sure. It Very was. Between Taxi and Pretty Baby. And it was kind of... Oh, what, taxi Driver? W- yeah, yeah, Taxi, taxi Driver. driver. Yeah. 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 Taxi, I don't remember that subplot. <laughs> I started down the sitcom route and quickly yeah. adjusted Thank to Taxi you. Driver. Um, we, we started with the statutory rape rock in the later 60s yeah. with yeah. the young girls and all that kind of stuff. Then that gave way to rambling mm-hmm. in the early 70s. And then from the mid-70s, to the early 80s, we got into like Don, Portrait of a Teenage Runaway. Yes. Sure. And so we got very caught up in this. She's 15. She lives in Nebraska. She could say bus ticket <sighs> to Hollywood. We, we good. Exploitation. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? That, there, and young exploitation yes. with sex. That's you know a, one of the And very... they never, they didn't make them 19 and a half. No. They, she was a 15 year old honor student at uh, yeah, La Cunada Elementary American, yeah. School. But by night, she was a street walker. There, that's one of the best, um, very special episodes of Facts of Life when Tootie runs away into the city mm-hmm. and she gets recruited by another like 13 year old prostitute. Yes, Dawn, portrait of a teenage runaway. She, uh, she shocked just, the nation. It shocked the nation. We'll we'll get to that, but first of all, the one that yeah. uh, Gene, there was always, and they always had all the scenes. They had the pimp scene. Oh yeah. They had they we you know what we loved we loved the naive girl from the stick. She's like yeah. fifteen. Like, well, your your <laughs> automobile has fur on the roof. That's right. Get in. <laughs> Well, I've never been in a car that had mink fur on the roof. <laughs> That's right. You're going to yeah. love it. Don't worry, honey. I'll treat you nice. And then a little like, try a little this. Yeah. You know, what is that? It'll oh, relax it's going to It's going to relax you, you know. <laughs> then there was always the, there was this ubiquitous scene, too. Uh, the young 15-year-old fresh-faced one from the mm-hmm. Sticks runs into the grizzled 17 and a half year old yes, veteran. Yes. She's seen be, too much. She's, she's smoking. chewed up and spit oh, out. Oh, honey, you don't know how the game's played, do That's you right. now? Yes. She was sort of nice, but also scary and mean yes. at the same time. Then there would be the one really mean prostitute who would grab her by the hair <laughs> and tell her, you know. Stay off the west side. You do what Swan tells you to do <laughs> or you don't come back. And then there was the one with the heart of gold. Yeah. That was Looking trying to her. look out for her. But uh, we'll play the one that uh, Gina sent. It's a movie. Wait, down. what? What year is this? Sorry, movie of the week seventy. It's all in the caption. Oh. Does it say seventy eight? Seventy seven. Seventy seven. There you go. Teenagers will run away from home. Your daughter was picked up tonight for prostitution. I was cold. I just wanted a place to crawl into. This is the story of one of them. There are fourteen and fifteen year old girls yeah, and Lou. boys selling their bodies for a place to sleep. Not now. David Soul, Clifton Davis, and Linda Pearl, Little Ladies of the Night. Little Ew. Ladies of the Night. Yeah, what's enough always, to say, ladies? <laughs> there's, they're always in a phone booth, like mm-hmm. at the edge of their, at the edge of their rope. Yeah, yeah. David Soul, Starsky and Hutch, Lou oh. Gossett Jr. Of course, I can't remember who Linda Pearl was or mm-hmm. Clifton Davis was, but um, there was, you know, was a, the, the black guy was always the pimp, mm-hmm. and that's just the way they, uh, the way they rolled back then. <laughs> Uh, then I started thinking about uh, Angel. Angel was a theatrical release from the early 80s. And Angel, uh, this was in movie theaters. It's quite a dichotomy we're looking at. That's it's, it's the same girl. 
It's a picture of the same girl on kind of a split screen. It says, okay. high school honor student by day, Hollywood hooker by night. I got to see this. Now she's all done up. What's the description? Oh, maybe I have the description of this one. High school honor student by day, Hollywood hooker by night. The plot follows a teenage prostitute in Los Angeles who faces danger when a serial killer begins stalking and murdering young sex workers. So the story isn't yeah. even about that she's leading a double life as a teenager. It's about a serial killer. Somewhere in the description said she was 15. Did it not? Yeah. Uh, well, look at it. Yeah. That's a young girl. She's 15. Wow. That's a she's trying to, uh, yeah. uh, Give her a driver's license. Uh, <laughs> 15, Learner's yeah. permit. 15-year-old girl. And by the way, somehow this high school honor roller by day and, and streetwalker at night's all been vetted with her counselor and her parents. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. It's just when the killer shows That's up we on the side. Right. Yeah. We got we to stop to this. Damn. Did you see this? Uh, I remember this when it came out in 84. I did not run to the theater. I Who was the titular angel? Um, that know? is Donna Wilkes. Donna Wilkes, yeah. Um, oh. Who I don't know. But it spawned a second one, and what was the third one called that uh, made me made me laugh, Max? About it? The Angel <laughs> Three, the final chapter. <laughs> oh my god! You think this final chapter has only been around for about ten minutes? Oh, hell to the no! <laughs> Angel was having a fight. They did a one; it was successful enough for a two. That spawned a three. A final chapter. There's actually a fourth one that came out in the nineties. Oh, they lied. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like Cher on her retirement yeah. tour that started in 81. Or Gronk. You in, saw her retirement right, tour? Or Gronk. Yeah. yeah, in this, in the first one, the street's dangers increase because a psycho necrophiliac serial Ew. killer oh, I begins get it. to stalk and murder prostitutes. Yeah, that, okay. At least we get why he's doing it. Who, uh, the guy I would like to be put under observation is the guy who takes the pen to pad. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got an idea for a movie. <laughs> What is it about? It's about a dog that can play basketball? Mm. Nope. Eh, boring. <laughs> uh, no, this uh, one. Talking fish? <laughs> no. Come on now. That's <laughs> Mr. Limpet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Talking female fish? Well, uh, you're halfway home. Okay, all right. Now, this one is about a ninth, uh, no, mm. a seventh, mm. 15, no, let's see, nine-year-old girl. Uh, Come on, think, Bert. Think. You're getting younger. Why don't uh, we just okay. go with... A 15-year-old girl. Okay. By day, she's at school on a roll. Oh, oh that's how nice. nice. This is it's something night. the fool's going to aspire to. Hollywood Streetwalker. Uh, what? Yeah, I thought yeah. you were going to say at night she works at the local hospital. No. Walking the streets, doling out meals. So homeless. Yeah, uh, a big bowl of pussy, if that's <laughs> what the meal is. Be a long line for that shit. And then... Things, I really ratchet up the uh, tension. How could it possibly get worse? Well, there's a serial killer. Oh, Is, She's a serial killer? No, no. Oh. Serial killer on the loose, uh, and uh, he's he's preying upon uh, streetwalkers. Oh, that's a horrible. Bad time to be I don't think it could get any worse than that. And he's a necrophiliac. What? And he has Crohn's disease. Tell me this is all. <laughs> Adam, we... We'd like you to take a couple of days off yeah. just to rest. I think maybe there's... I feel great. You feeling okay, big guy? I've never felt better creatively. You know, we have an in-house doctor. Uh, we could talk about me or we could start writing this shit down before it escapes my facile brain. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and write it down so we have evidence for later? What'd you say? Yeah, go ahead oh, and write it down. Oh, you said beat sheet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's All just, right. just get on paper. Yeah, get it and make sure to sign it. I know Eddie Gordetsky. He's the best punch up guy in the business. So well, once we get the script done, yeah. he yeah, can put think, some put some mirth in. I don't it. think he'll stand for this. I don't know. This is a winner, man. Wait, I'm sorry, is this a comedy? Can I say this? You're talking to the guy who did Sheila Portrait of a Teenage Runaway. Mm. Uh, admittedly a hit. You're talking about uh the guy who did Bernice. Uh huh. Portrait of a teenage runaway. Right. Mm. Little now, ladies of the night. I did. Uh, I did fourteen and fuckable. I've oh done them all. God. Now I'm going to keep going. I did. I was the guy who came up with the rape bus. About would, about, about that 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 Jewish camp that kind of went uh, south. I remember rape bus. It was right there in the title. So I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you get me a cup of coffee and you get another steno pad. Okay. We're going all night. We have the trailer, Maxapana. Oh. oh, this is going to be delightful. It's trailer for Angel. Angel. Oh, I was thinking 85. Yeah. It seems skippable. 
I don't now know, that I Gina. See the trailer. I don't know. From pigtails to pumps. Find out where Angel is streaming, Brian, <laughs> so Gina can get caught up. Do you want to know what else Donna Wilkes did? Because <clears throat> yes. you're the only reason I've ever heard of this. She was on Hello, Larry, the oh, sitcom. Yeah. She was Diane Adler on Hello, Larry. Apparently, that was a different Stroke spinoff. Hello, Larry? That's what it says. Never, never knew that. Great news. You can stream this on AMC+, Plus, Tubi, Shudder, and Pluto. Shut it. That's right. Yeah, this says Hello, Larry, a role she reprised in a spinoff episode of Different Strokes. Hello, or I guess they just did crossover. Hello, then. Larry was, uh, what's his name, from MASH, who I can't think of uh, right now. He re- oh. he moved on from, uh, dab. Man, Hello, Alda? Weird. No. <laughs> McLean Stevenson? <laughs> McLean, okay. yeah. I was thinking he had a weird first name, yeah. Uh, then, of course, the, I had to go down the, the down the uh, foxhole, in this case, the Fox's Hole from mm. 1980. Nice. That was a Jodie Foster, Scott Baio, Sally Kellerman, Randy Quaid. Fox's what? was a movie? Fox's was a movie. Again, young teenage girls... They leave the San Fernando Valley. They go to Hollywood. They go See, rogue. that was back when Hollywood was Hollywood. You know what I mean? Now it's a bunch of fucking guys dressed up like SpongeBob yeah. shitting on themselves. Yeah. This is back when it was like seedy Hollywood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Prostitution, street yeah. walkers, the clubs, Good you know, the rock and roll clubs and everything, you know. I'd like to see Jodie Foster and Scott Bayo in a movie together now. That would be awesome. It's yeah. called, it's called the uh, Human Touch. It's called My Dinner with Scotty, and we just <laughs> mic, mic them up and they talk politics. That'd be awesome. Um, was this was this after Taxi Driver? So she got a yeah. little bit typecast. Four years, yeah. People, what's the slug say there? Gina? I can't read People that. don't think we can have any serious. Oh, that's really hard to read. Sorry. Serious, serious emotions. emotions. Nobody gives a damn. But that's all right. I've got friends. Yeah, so she would get up with her whore friends and oh. go into Hollywood and then get into trouble. But these were all 15, 16, 17-year-old girls. I'd love to see a teenage Sally Kellerman. We were all like just crazy wed to super young girls doing yeah. weird sexual yeah. things you guys in, are gross. in Hollywood. Then, of course... Um, you got, and I'll, I, I will take the trailer on any of these, Max Apata. Um, okay, we have foxes. Four yes. teenage girls come of age in the asphalt desert of Los Angeles. San okay. Fernando Valley, uh, arranged with blazing, sorry, arranged with blazing soundtrack. And, with a blazing soundtrack and endless drinking, drugs, and sex. Uh, oh, what's worse? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, dr- sex, drugs, 15-year-olds. Awesome. Yeah. Foxes. Do we see foxes? You guys ever see foxes? No. Another oh, big geez. release. Teenage dopers. All right. What we, a waste. We, we were hell bent on turning 15 year olds into 35 year olds in, like in the 70s and early 80s. Version of like American Graffiti? Because I don't know what this movie's about. They're just girls having fun. Haven't you seen the trailer? Is that I, enough, that's Brian? what I'm saying. I don't They're know. They're getting what goes into on trouble. There. They're coming of age. Well done. It used to be enough just to be good looking, get into trouble, imply sex. Mm-hmm. And then you needed one scene. We were so enthralled with pushing someone through a sheet sheet of glass, yeah. you know, window, like Play he glass threw him through a window. Yeah. You know, so that or shooting and having the window crack yeah. down. And then the other big visual thing was hopping on the back of a motorcycle and having sure. the guy speed off into the night. That was a big visual Oof. thing back then. So uh, then there was, it was controversial at the time, but. Gets pretty creepy, you know, like like whatever the opposite of fine wine is. Mm. Uh, pretty baby. Yep. 1978. Oh, mm. I've, I've Brooke seen Shields. Brooke Shields. Yeah. They parade her in on a plate, basically. She was 12 when she did the movie. Oh boy. And she was doing nudity in the movie. Yes, she was. And that was a big part of people wanting to come see the movie. Is this Child pornography now. The entire crew would be arrested. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is so obscene. It truly is. This is twelve-year-old, not teenage Brooke Shields. Yeah. So this is a French director named Louis Malle. Oh. He's a very avant. He very well respected. He did Au Revoir Les Fonds. Yeah, sure. Au revoir, Le mm-hmm. uh, Anyway, um, and I think her mom like signed off on her doing nudity or something. So yes. they skirted the law, but uh, uh, unseemly. Yes. This would be, I mean, this would never be out of the headlines if this happened today. 
So it was this weird 70s pedophile kind of obsession with super young girls having sex, and it was sort of applauded, and I, 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 it certainly wasn't frowned upon. They just made movie after movie after movie. Right. And also, it's so skeevy. Like, the thing is, it's like, we take this really hot chick, and we say she's 15, and then we put her... In, in hot pants and pumps and have her walk in. Then of course, guys are going to be into this. Right. Who wouldn't be into a 15-year-old walking the streets and turning tricks? Sure. Ugh. Weird. Pretty gross. And then this led to, I imagine it came in this order, her, was it Jordash or Levi's or fucking... Cal- uh, Calvin, Calvin Klein. Klein. Oh, yeah. oh, Brooke, you're so pretty, Nothing Brooke. comes between. Yeah. Oh. And like literally off camera, the guy being like, you're so pretty, Brooke. So now if you're married to Brooke Shields and you try to have some consensual sex on a Saturday night, at some point, it, there's going to be a stoppage with some tears, right? Of course. This is just, there's just too much trauma. Horrible. And exploitation in that past. I saw an interview with her one time and she, this, of course, came up and she said it wasn't until years later that she looked back and watched it and she was like, oh my God, I was raped. Like, I did like what kind of mom says, you know what? This sounds like a good vehicle for my daughter. Uh, one that wants to hammer a check. Oh, I see. I guess. Brooke, Brooke maintains it was no big deal to shoot those scenes. Wow. wow. Well, in those days it wasn't, I guess. Yeah. And, of course, uh, the bitterest of all the Bradys, Eve Plum, starred in uh, Don, Portrait of a Teenage <gasps> oh. Runaway. What? Yeah. That was Eve Plum. I'm not familiar with this. Oh, did we not show Don, Portrait of a Teenage Runaway? Did I get to that one? I'm, yeah. I'm all over the road here. Before we get to that, I'll give you a little bit of movie. Oh, I didn't know that was Do Eve we have Plum. a trailer yeah. for that, or do we see a no, trailer? No, there's no trailer for this oh, one. Oh, okay. Wow. A little bit of movie history trivia. I, I mentioned Lou, uh, Louis Maul, and uh, he directed uh, Au Revoir L'Enfant, a French film. Uh, it was big in the 80s, and that was the film when Tarantino worked the video store, and it was on the shelves. He has a similar mastery of the written word as you, Adam, so he looked at it mm. and saw Au Revoir L'Enfant. Well, it didn't know what the fucking man, and it kept calling it that Reservoir Dog movie. And Are that's you where we get the title for Reservoir Dogs. Because wow. Reservoir Dogs has nothing to do with the movie. That's oh, that's so the zero. pronunciation of that would sound like. Yeah, au revoir is it's spelled out au revoir. Or, oh, okay. Au revoir. Yeah. Yeah. Reservoir yeah. Dogs is movie. It goodbye, baby? Uh, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to children. the baby? Yeah, yeah. okay. All right. Um, where, anyway, a little bit of trivia. Huh. Yeah, so there's a lot of teenage sex movies in the 70s Jesus. that then. Build into the 80s, and it was always weird. And it kind of, you know, one of the sexiest magazines. Uh oh. <laughs> we've looked at these before, Chris. The um, Colt Roundup. <laughs> Chris. No, but yes, but no. Um, true Crime magazines. Um, I think they were called True Crime. They would have like every cover was a busty chick. Getting her clothes ripped off. A lot of, a lot of tearing the blouse yeah, yeah, open. Yeah. And then the big move was the stiletto yep. in between the titties on the bra strap. Just about to snap it. Oh. Just about to pop it open and set those babies free. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was... That was <laughs> Right next to the, you know, the wholesome magazines like Low Rider and High Times. Right. You know what I mean? It was always very pulpy. What was inside of it? I I never. It was official detective series. Uh, the kill, hey. There's a few different kinds, but they're yeah. all in this style. Well, basically, you know how all the big podcasts are all the true crime ones. Yeah, I'm very this familiar. This is basically that in a magazine form. This is maybe for dudes. Yeah, this is true crime plus. Hustler or Penthouse. I never thought this would happen to uh, me. Letters. Yeah. Or, well, those are real. Oh, yeah. I didn't there was that. a there was a lot of like he took her to the woods and made her his slave. You know what I mean? You go, oh god. You know, it's like a lot of mm. weird rapey at knife point point crime. Very stuff. fringy behavior. So now the question is, as we always talk about culture and stuff, have we evolved out of this, Adam, or is it that we're still into it but we're not allowed to talk about it? Because this is some pretty dark shit. I I mean, there's probably corners of the internet that could satisfy and quench your thirst for this. But this, was, this, but this was mainstream. This was this was considered. That's what I'm saying. Fine back then. Wow. I mean, it was magazines that were on the rack at the Seven Eleven next to Sports Illustrated. Yeah. Like it was like these are just normal normal stuff back then. Way before Tipper Gore got involved. No stickers over this. No magazine, no no, no plastic bag, right. not behind the counter. Right. Well, it's kind of it's kind of interesting that. 
we went from that 15-year-old girl, she's a woman, mm. she can make her own choices, and she can lay down with who she wants to lay down with, to now... Yeah, I got a son who's thirty three, and he's at home. He's trying to. He's just trying to think about he's taking some colleges over at the JC. He's yeah. trying to just kind of figure out what he wants to do. He taking likes a couple of gap years. He yeah. likes gaming. Like, he likes what? Gaming. He likes playing like Monopoly. I've had more video stuff. You know, oh, he's a programmer. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's a, a chess. He he's a chess prodigy. He only prodigy. does it six to nine hours a day. Oh. Like we are. That's true. I uh, I talked to Doctor Drew about this yesterday. You know, he's got kids that are 29 30 and he's like they're around you know what i mean like they're they're I mean, 29 i know that's how old we are which is not it's not to say they're all living under the roof but they're all kind of like hey uh what are we doing now yeah, here right. pops and it's like uh my generation like, i don't fucking know my parents were done when i was 14 there was no looking at them going uh hey what's the next yeah. move you know right so we went from turning them into adults at 15 to making them into adolescents at 30. Yeah. I would argue we probably should have stopped in like 2001 mm, or 1997. Mm -hmm. You know, that would have mm -hmm. been the time. Yeah. Remember I said like all, all progress isn't good. Right. Just because we're moving forward doesn't mean we're moving like toward a better thing. Mm. So at some point somebody said, these kids are kids. You leave them alone. Now the kid's 32. Yeah. Can't and they're still, still a kid. All right. Let me hit... A spot here. Oh, true. Uh, was it called true crime? Some of them were called true crime, women's true crime, true detective, startling detective. There's, there's a, this is a big market. Wow. The there's a many, many magazines yeah. about beautiful women who are like abducted and raped at stiletto point. What does sex called the numbers in bingo even mean? <laughs> what does I, that even mean? I don't, I don't know what the cover of that suggests. Uh, okay. Now I couldn't read, so I, you know I looked at the cover and I was done. Sure, that's all you needed. Unless there's going to be some good pictures, but yeah. there were never any good pictures inside. It was all about the theater of the mind. Mm -hmm. All right, let me tell you about uh, American Hartford Gold inflation at a forty-year high. Yes, ever since Adam left high school. Mm -hmm. That's right. Interest rates skyrocketing. Experts like J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon predict a recession. Um, Using terms like economic hurricane, it's come and protect your future, and you do like I did. You call American Hartford Gold. They'll help you protect your savings and retirement by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. One short phone call, and uh, you can have the physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. Highest rates, uh, highest rated, I should say, firm in the country. A plus rating from the uh, triple B. Thousands of satisfied customers. You tell them Adam Corolla sent you for up to 1500 bucks of free silver on your first order. It's American Hartford Gold, right, Dawson? Call 866-899-2028. That's 866-899-2028. Or text Adam to 998899. That's 866-899-2028. Or text Adam to 998899. All right. I grabbed a um, vid because it was bothering me. I was heading into Hollywood yesterday. What was I on? Kawanga, Chris? Yeah. That's like right where Kawanga and Highland uh, turn into become each mm -hmm, other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's turned bowl? out to, to be an RV super center oh. all along the side of the freeway. This <laughs> Dealing is, days. Yeah. This is right in front of the Hollywood Bowl. One, it's two, just three, RV, four, five, six, broken down RV. Seven, I like the fact that they're putting traffic cones yeah, out yeah, there now. Eight, is Fishing Town just a broken up ten. RV after broken up RV, just all parked all the way down? And people living there. Now it's funny that street's on a little bit of a grade, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a little bit of a grade on the street, a lesser grade on. Uh, on a street that has uh, a Mexican food place that I really enjoy. And I uh, went out there and took Sunny recently. And when I got out of the car after just parking on the street in front of the Mexican food place with the slight grade, lesser than that, there's a big sign in the window said, turn Kirby your wheels, tires uh... in so you can avoid the ticket. So oh. there are people out there on the beat who are worried about how and where you park your car. Yeah. But if you just want to win a bago and you want to deal fentanyl, we got uh, we got all the time in the world for you. Now, 
Doesn't it seem like all this shit could just go away in 10 minutes if somebody just went, hey, fuckers, you oh. can't park. You, you, you're you not allowed to park a home on a city street and then live in it. Yeah. And, and not parking, pay anything. There's parking restrictions everywhere. Indeed. Everywhere in this town. How do they get away with this? Yeah, I counted What's 11 just in the shot you, in the four second shot you put up. There, there is no loophole. There is, it's not politically expedient for some reason to go after these people. And it's fine to go after you, who's a taxpayer, has a checking account, uh, has registered your vehicle, has insurance. We can go after you. And you're automatic, by the way. All mm. the cars are automatic now and not turning your tires. Mm. And maybe it made some sense when cars had a clutch and it could be in neutral or pop out of gear. But there is nothing. It's just laws not being enforced. And for some reason, that became some sort of humanitarian quest. But people dying in broken up Winnebago's parked around, by the way, the Hollywood Bowl, where when the band comes to town, there's 1,000 rules about parking oh. around that place. Oh, the stacked parking alone the, will kill the, you. There is everything to do with where you park. Uh, for the length of the concert, forget start a new life. <laughs> I mean, they're literally like raising kids. <laughs> Jesus, where goddamn does, Christ. Where does Garcetti live, our mayor? I don't know. Name, because is this one of those you're things? You're looking to dox him? I'm going well, go to I'm gonna go with Hancock Park. I think you're right. Because it's one of those things where it's like, oh, you don't live there, so what do you care? Or something, but there's... People who buy, I asked Chris, the average home over there is two and a half million bucks. They got to look out of their balcony down at this shit show and pass by it every day and pay crazy, crazy taxes so they can live in uh, uh, these weird drugged out gypsy caravans. Like if you would have said to me. X amount of years ago, would LA ever put up with guys parking Winnebago's oh, and just please. setting up makeshift camps? I go, no, they'd be towed that night. Like, just go in there, fucking tow them. Just get rid of it. And where they are is more foliage granted dead than cement. So, like, there's been multiple camper fires in my neighborhood, my area at least. And like, these things go up all the time. The whole, the whole 405 next to the Getty Center yeah. was right. up in flames. It looked like you were literally driving through hell. It, it's literally because of an encampment. More than fifty percent of the fires now in LA County are from homeless people. We have revenge fires. We have the 2019 LA City Council meeting where they, yeah, they, they were extending the parking ban for people living in their vehicles in 2019, and this is what uh, the response they got during the meeting. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! What? So, what what we've here's how we've decided to to craft our society. We have 23 unemployable nutty cunts who can make every noontime city council mm -hmm. meeting on a Wednesday in Santa Monica or West L.A. or whatever. The rest of us go to work and then we pay for everything in taxes that keeps mm -hmm. everything. But we can't attend the meeting. But this is Vox Populi. This is it, the voice of the people. Right. And then the eight city council members have to listen to the crazy 23 cunts who, who are unemployable in front of them. And they're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. OK, Sorry. That's just nobody. That's nobody. Then there's everyone else who owns a home, pays taxes, drives the roads, tries to raise kids. They all want it gone, but we're too fucking busy working, so we can't attend the fucking meeting. And that's, this is how we end up with mm. these decisions. Well, can't the council people grow some balls and be like, sorry, you don't like it. Meeting adjourned. It'd be nice. And, you know, they always do this like, oh, there is no good answer and blah, blah, blah. You wait. You get one fucking can do human. You get Rick Caruso in there, and in four days, it's just, it'll be gone. Now, people go like, yeah, well, where do these people go? I, I don't know. They either go into rehab or they go back to their home in Arkansas or they kill themselves. But, but the answer isn't they set up a broken down Winnebago and do drugs out of it. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the solution. No. And they, they like, well, then what are we going to do with all these people? At a certain point, People have to either enter a facility or get the – look, here's, here's all I know. You, you may not – you know, if you go to a park on a uh, Saturday and have some, uh, some times filming your hubby draining threes, 
Um, <laughs> at some point, it gets dark and you have to go. Mm -hmm. And then you could say, where does everyone go? Mm -hmm. Answer is, don't know, can't stay here. Away. Clear it out. Yeah. Away. It's a park. It's where people yeah. take their kids. They yeah. don't want to step on syringes. That's the answer. Well, and to that point, I just saw a big giant sign in North Hollywood that said there's going to be big North Hollywood nights activities like movies and concerts. I and know. I'm thinking, where are we supposed to sit? It's all full of tents. Angel's going to be there. I take my kid there. Right. Angel's yeah. going to oh, cash in. Probably try and save her. That speaking of a 70s movie, there was a movie called The Hollywood Nights mm. that like had some stars in it from like the 70s. I don't know, maybe like a young Steve Gutenberg or Ooh. something. Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Michelle Pfeiffer, Fran Drescher. Wow. Star like studded. 1977 or something like that. Uh, 1980. Oh, 80. And um all I remember from the movie is one guy would punctuate a song like tequila mm -hmm. or an Elvis song with a fart. That's and good. Uh, that's all that's all that's I why got. That's beloved. I got no problem with that. Hollywood Nights was the name of a gang, I think. I don't know. Now you got to find the trailer for that. All right, we'll take a break. We got the news uh, coming and maybe the Hollywood Nights. <laughs> Star studded though, right? Oh, yeah. Right after this. Breaking, breaking. This just in. We have the trailer for Hollywood Nights with a K, by the way. Right. Hollywood so, Knights. Remember Damashek was all about naming some team the, the Hollywood Knights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he actually brought that up to uh, one of the players, I remember, and that guy was not interested. <laughs> it, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in she, this thing. She plays Susie Q. See if the guy's farting in it. Okay. It's the same year as uh, fucking Scarface. Oh, is it? Well, 80. I think it's a year oh. or two off. Here's a trailer, and uh, we also have the fart scene. Starface too, later, right? The, uh -huh. the Hollywood Nights, 1980. I got to tell you, no the bullshit. That is a really good trailer. Holly That's like the original clickbait. Yeah. yeah. Really well marketed. Michelle Pfeiffer didn't even make no, it. She didn't make the Who cut. Who else was in that, Max Bata? Tony Danza, Fran Drescher. You saw Fran Drescher in the back seat, I think. That was her. Now you got to find the clip of the guy farting the song. Here we go. Which delighted me. Wow. It's the thinking man's comedy. That's right. Yeah. Stinky man's comedy. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. Those are the movies we had to choose from. Ooh, a rubber wool vehicle. That's really? right. Really? Wow. Some Valari and farted into the mic. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> there's there's a, a lot of news to get to, but did you happen to see the picture I posted on Twitter yesterday at the local Ralph's in I North did, Hollywood? I did, yeah. I wanted to show this oh, yeah. to you guys because, you know, we talk about locking up the, you know, the shaving stuff and the razors and the medicine. Well, my Ralph's, I'm just bopping around and getting my stuff. I go down the aisle and my cart is about to hit a door, like a makeshift door in the aisle. I'm like, what the hell is this? So I go back down to ask the guy what gives. There's a guy standing at the end of the aisle. And I was just about to say, like, what is this? And he goes, oh, uh, ma'am, anything you bought in this aisle, you have to pay for right here. And I go, what is going on? And so he goes, they just constructed a door yeah. in the wow. middle of an aisle. Yeah. Oh, my for God. All the, it, they said it's a high theft aisle, has like mouthwash and toothpaste and Advil, I guess. And you, if, if, you're, if you go in and you exit, they'll stop you and say, whatever you grab from this aisle, you have to pay for right here at, wow. in the aisle. Oh, and I'll man. give you a sticker, and then you can take it up to the front with all your other stuff. Oh, man. One more sign of the apocalypse. It was pretty right? fucking crazy, right? How's the house hunting going? Not good. Okay. Because with all this, uh, oh, with all this urban decay, prices through the roof. Well, you, what I don't get about a lot of these items, like um, razor cartridges, batteries, a mouthwash, or th whatever it is we're talking about here, it's like oh, that's a high <clears throat> dollar item. Like, first off, not really, yeah. but all right. But I guess a isn't it a dollar to size ratio? Like, no, the razors yeah. aren't the most expensive thing in the store, but they can fit in your pocket. Yeah, right. easy to steal, and it's nine dollars, whatever. Um, these guys aren't doing it so they can get a good, clean shave or have minty, what? fresh breath or more batteries to power their flashlight. They got to move this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's interesting you say How that. How does one purchase? <laughs> Slightly used razors or razors that are not from a store. Is there a market? And how, what is the market? I guess you can open an Amazon shop. They're sealed. So what's the difference? Right. You know what I mean? Dawson. Has yeah, I phone. know. It's just who seeks it out. Like 
They sell those at flea markets all the time. Oh, oh really? Flea that's markets. Laundry detergent. That's a big, big seller at flea markets. I thought you were going to say that you take it apart to use it to, you know, cut up your whatever. No, I they they sell it, oh. but I guess it's mm-hmm. at the at the flea market. So, we inside the market we got the separate door, so people will stop ripping wow. off cartridges for razors and then selling them at flea markets and then outside we got the uh mother daughter team from guatemala with the hot dog cart Mm -hmm. and then the person next to her with the flowers so we just turned into this weird kind of underground black market (laughs) uh economy yeah it was weird it was very i've never seen anything like it it's uh with along with the Razor wire on the freeway signs. It is a sign. Yeah. We need to pump the brakes and figure out what the fuck is going on, people. Indeed. All right, let's do some news. So new footage from inside Robb Elementary School is raising more questions about the police response to the mass shooting in May. And it is apparently not what we thought or what we were told. The footage shows multiple officers standing outside the classroom armed with really heavy weapons, heavier weapons than initially reported, including high-powered rifles and at least one ballistic shield. It contradicts earlier reports that officers were inadequately armed and unprepared to move in. But there's more. The director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, that's Colonel Steve McCraw, he had blistering testimony at the state Senate hearing. uh, And he said that the classroom door could not be locked from the inside. Yet there's no indication that anyone tried to open the door oh, while the gunman was in there. Instead, he says the police waited around for a key, a key for a door that was open, it sounds like. Uh, McCraw lit into the Uvalde School District police chief who was in charge, saying the only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers above the lives of children. So they're standing there fully armed with a locked door. And then they say, you know, we all we already heard they were standing around for 70 minutes outside. I mean, none of this adds up. They were there three to four minutes after the shooting started. I, I heard one timeline. Um, it's very confusing because there's then, a lot of contradictory information. As a guy who hangs a lot of doors, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm interested, which is there is no locking <laughs> from the inside. So there's no right. like thumb turn lock. But then... How would you lock the door if it was a locking door? I'm pretty sure they have, well, you would know, they have those locks for industrial use or schools or whatever that have a key and a key only. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, depressing button. Yeah, yeah, that's a keyed both sides thing. But then they said the door was unlocked. Yeah. So how would one lock it during normal school days if, in fact, you shut the door and locked it? The teacher would have the key and 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 lock it. All right, so he doesn't have the key. They're waiting for the key, but apparently they didn't need a key. And everyone's going to come at me and say, that's a... There's so much contradictory information on this that's still coming out. It's it's crazy. Yeah. I There was that part where, like, one of the teachers went out to the patio and forgot to shut the door. That was the first one. And then it wasn't Mm. that, the outside door. Right. The back door. Yeah, the the there's a big problem, which is people do not want to enter places where people are shooting guns, even cops, even when it's their job. And the protocols are, I there's an excuse for all protocols because it's always like whoever's in charge is rarely there. Mm-hmm. So then they got to radio somebody and they're like, stand down and tell you know, X, Y, or Z. Right. I, right. I just think the, the the new world order is, you know, in in the case of a school shooting or a terrorist shooting in a theater, whatever it is, like, we're all in. Everyone's going in. Right. Sorry. Yeah. That's the job. Right. Right. Sad. Uh, yeah. And, and we talked about how <laughs> they told the teachers to gather up all the kids in one little group and put them in under a desk. Well, guess what happened? So everything needs to be, dare I say, reimagined. Yeah. A lot of the... The cops are saying they didn't have the breaching stuff for the door, but evidently they didn't check the door. I don't, I guess. I mean, it's there. This is literally coming out in, in pretty much live time, but the, uh, the guy in charge is pissed. It always, it's, it's always, it's, it's like, it's like the Pat Tillman syndrome. You know what I mean? It's like, 
it always turns out to be bad when we the, start the worst in, version. In, in the worst version. Whenever we start investigating, oh, killed in action, uh, yeah, defending I, his his fellow troops. It always, it always. And Tillman's still a hero. The guy fucking oh, of course. quit his job. And, but it, the worst up. version of, of yes, that it's story. Always, it's it's never good when right. they start looking into the timeline. Right. Ugh. Well, we uh, we talked about this story. God, the last couple, maybe a year of Dave Chappelle wanting to donate to the school that he went to in D.C. And then the students at the school saying, not so fast, Chappelle, we don't like you because of your last stand-up special and your trans jokes and screw you and we don't want your name, we don't want your money. Well, he said, okay, fine, let's put it to a vote. He went online and basically said to the kids, you raise money. Raise money for me and raise money against me. And whoever wins... That's what we'll do. And by the way, if you don't contribute, please, and I quote, shut the fuck up forever. So turns out that the people who were pro Dave Chappelle and renaming the theater won. And he was going to go in and it was he, he was it was going to be you know, the Chappelle Auditorium. But wait, last minute change. He flipped the script on them, and he decided not to have it called the Dave Chappelle Theater or whatever. Bill Cosby That's Memorial right. Auditorium. That's right. It was the Duke Ellington High School Theater. The Kevin Spacey Center for Before We yes. Arts. Yes. Right. Um, but he said, we are going to call the theater Theater for Artistic Freedom and Expression. Uh, and again, it was supposed to, he was supposed to be honored last year, but everyone said, fuck you. And I think in his own Dave Chappelle way, this is an even better dig. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, snot nose. 14 year olds and 15 year olds that don't know Jack Squat. Don't fuck with a seasoned comedy mind. <laughs> They're going to get you. Yeah. Number one. Number two. Can't have a black guy go back to his own school who's hit it big and, and <laughs> give an auditorium. Yeah. No, we don't want that don't anymore. Uh-uh. It's such it, it it you know what it shows? See, there's there's like two <clears throat> mindsets. There is the I would like better working conditions employee, and then there's disgruntled employee, mm -hmm. right? Now the disgruntled employee never goes, I'm disgruntled. They always go, I want a <laughs> coffee machine in the lounge, and I want a longer <laughs> break. But they're never disgruntled. <laughs> right. They just, they're fighting for rights. Right. Right? Except where you start to find out when you start giving them all the shit they want, and they're worse, they are fucking disgruntled. Mm -hmm. Like, these kids are disgruntled mm -hmm. now. It's, not, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of, like... But it, it bleeds into, you know, it's that sort of uh, whoever that cunt was on the city council is like, fuck you, Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we're getting into a weird disgruntled zone. If, in fact, you just want what you want and you get what you want, then you should then shut the fuck up. You get an auditorium, this guy gave it to you. Shut up. Yeah. But no, we, we, we are put upon. Yes. We have complaints and yes. we need to be heard. Has there ever. Whatever the cause is, whatever whatever the cause, it could be Black Lives Matter, could be queer and LGBT, could be trans rights, you know, what uh, environmental, whatever, whatever the cause is, or uh, uh, the um, groups advocating for the homeless. Mm -hmm. I, is there any point where they go, hey, we got what we want. Yeah. We're good now. Yeah. Or they just fucking move on to the next gripe, which is disgruntled. So we got a bunch of fucking disgruntled employees, except for we think they're just employees that want a, a, a better break room. Do this one thing. So we go, all right, we'll go to Ikea and get right. a new sofa. And then these guys go, no, no, they are disgruntled. That's We have a whole group of disgruntled little fucks. <laughs> and for some reason, people, like, I'll give you, remember that... Um, I'll, uh, I'll think of his word, the Evergreen College thing. Oh, yeah, Eastern Washington or something like that. Yes, with, um, oh my God. Uh, Goldstein, Goldfarb. Yeah. What is it? Isn't it Brett Goldstein? Goldstein. Or Brett? No, it's not Goldstein, oh. but it's it's Brett Wein, oh God, Weinstein. Juice. Weinstein. Okay. Weinstein, Juice. yeah. Weinstein, Weinstein. No one knows. <laughs> so he's the most uh, progressive guy in the world, and they're like, uh, hey, we have... We have the day off or uh, no, no black students uh, need to show up on this day. And they, I was like, okay, I'm progressive. I'm down with that. Well, we don't have to do that. So they don't do it. So, all right. I, he agrees with them. But they're disgruntled. 
Because if the case was just we want to set aside a day where black students don't have to come in, maybe fall a little further behind, that'd be awesome for the culture, but we'll, we'll carve out a day for that, then you got what you wanted, now you need to shut the fuck up, but you're disgruntled. Mission accomplished. So you sit around and you go, hmm. So we think the mission is some sort of you know black unity, equality. It's not. It's disgruntled <laughs> is the mission. So they let it ride for a couple of years, and then they're like, huh, we've got our way. But we need to keep going because we're disgruntled employees. So they go, hey, I got it now. Nobody shows up. No, no yeah, white you professors. You can't come in here. And then he's like, hey, man, I'm a progressive man of the left, but uh, I'm old school and I'm going to come in and teach my class. Then they're chasing around the fucking pitchfork. Literally. Why? <laughs> well, there's what they say they want. And then there's disgruntled yeah. you have to realize whether it's a fucking kid who's disgruntled a student who's disgruntled or a whole, whole organizations they're fucking disgruntled there is no satisfying there's no appeasement there's no bargaining and that's why they all need to be told to fuck right off well Thank said you. what was Chappelle's alternate title for the uh, theater it was center for it was no? the theater for artistic freedom and expression that's good dare I say I think I can do a little better for Chappelle. Someone get this to him. We're going to call it the Center for Humanities, Arts, Plays, Productions, Elections, Lectures, and Life Experiences Theater, or Acronym. Chappelle for short. Chappelle. Chappelle for short. <laughs> well done. The Chappelle Theater. I like that. Uh, that's smart. That'll fit on a on a marquee nicely. Yes. Uh, well, you, you don't think you're disgruntled, but you're about to get disgruntled. Mm. After we just... Talked about my experience at Tori Amos and how she didn't play the old hits and how you had a brilliant idea about one night is all hits night. One night we do, you know, whatever, a uh, potluck. Yeah. Zero tickets sold for potluck night, but go ahead. Guess what? Your favorite lady, Chrissy Hine, her future shows won't include any big hits. No. Come so on. she revealed on Facebook, this is what she said, I never, wanna, I never wanted to go there in the first place, but I was trying to keep myself alive and pay the bills. And yes, I know that's no reason to be in a rock band. I was just too scared to go back to waitressing. But those greatest hits and ballad days are behind me. If anyone wants to come and see me in the future, it's going to be punk rock and no hits. Now, she's not currently touring, but she did reveal that a new album is being worked on. So have fun at the show. I don't think she's going to draw. I was just doing Huey Lewis's 80s radio show, and he told me to pick out like six 80s songs, and I picked out a bunch of random stuff that no one's heard of. This is appointment listening. But I also uh, picked out Mystery Achievement by The Pretenders because I love that goddamn song. And then, comically, <laughs> less than 24 hours ago, we were standing out there with uh, our last guest, Randy Couture, and he was like, remember I did your radio show and Chrissy Hines was a guest? And <laughs> I went to go talk to her and I like touched her arm or something and she like she recoiled <laughs> or whatever. Forgot about that. Uh, prickly. Didn't you see her at like a private event and she like sped off? I was like, I never do this, but I'm going to do it. At Goodwood, they had like Lord Chichester's ball or something mm -hmm. that night in England for the big car race that was going on over there. And the pretenders were performing. Mm. And I was like, when this show is over, I'm going to go say hi to Chrissy Hine. I was, I've interviewed her before. She'll know who I am. Right. We got along good. And I love the pretenders. And as the show was ending, I just crept over to it. It was like a makeshift stage because it was done in a big mm. outdoor garden right. or whatever. And uh, in front of the kitchen. And she, I stood and stood and the set ended. And she just walked right off the stage, walked right through this like duvetine curtain that they had set up. <laughs> into a driveway with literally a car and an open. The door was open. Like I was going to, I'm still going to say hi to her by the car. The door was open. She slid right in, door shut, gone. Yeah. Like it was not 13 seconds after this. When the set. driver hears chain gang, he opens the door. That's right. <laughs> Start the engine. That's right. Yeah. No meet and greet, man. So yeah, have fun at that show. Um, somebody else who is also disgruntled against uh, their father. Um, one of Elon Corolla? Yes. Oh. Hmm. You know, first of all, Elon Musk has eight kids. No. It's like Nick Cannon. He has yeah. a lot of kids. Goddamn African Americans. <laughs> yeah. Well Good said. Call. Well said. One of Elon Musk's children, <laughs> who is transgender, by the way, has filed papers to change her name. Well, because sorry, the the over or under on 
kids with one of them not being transgender nope. is five and a half. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, like, these it days, is yeah. not, I mean. If you got eight in California, statistically, you, yeah. three will be yeah. trans. Sure. Yes. It's in, I don't know that it's possible to have a brood, you know what I mean? Yeah. Without, you know, if you want to redo uh, the Brady Bunch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for my three sons and one my, transition my three daughter. Sons? <laughs> question yeah, question mark. <laughs> like somebody's going to be transitioning. Yeah. You can't, you got to cut it off if you that don't want that. That would really fuck up the Brady's theme song. Mm -hmm. It'd be a shit show trying to figure yeah. that out. Because it was Banks, clear get on and it. simple. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, um, so she no longer wants to be, it's not that she doesn't want to be known as the other sex. She doesn't want to be known as Elon Musk daughter or child. I do love that. Yeah. In court documents, Xavier Musk, who recently turned 18, says she wants her name to be Vivian and uh, Vivian Wilson. Let me tell you something, little disgruntled douche of Elon offspring, um, devil spawn of <laughs> Elon. Fine. Mm. But I'm going to draft up some paperwork. Mm. Will be paperwork? Yes. Beca uh. Because when Elon moves on, and there's 750 patents he's left behind that aerospace is using and commercial yeah, aircraft is Texas. using and own half Texas. I need you to sign right now. You want nothing to do with this person, all right? Let's just let's put your fucking money where your mouth is. Yeah. You don't like the guy? You want nothing to do with him? Fine. Good. But when he kicks off, yeah. they're going to whack it up seven ways instead of right. eight ways. Let's right. do that. Yeah. Sign yeah. the fucking release, douche. Well, I think this child might be might be into that because um, as for the reason that this is happening, she claims uh, gender identity and the fact that I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape, or form. Mm. She was... Uh, I would recommend people starting a family now, like if you're thinking... I want two kids. Mm -hmm. Have three because there has to be one you don't talk to. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The air and the spare. Yeah. <laughs> so just get that space shaver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want two kids? Good. You'll have two kids. Yeah. And then there'll be the third you don't talk to anymore. Right. Because that's the new world order. That's right. Um, so her mom is Canadian. Where's author? mystery achievement? So you can still say the kids line. are coming over. Even that's though, right. Right. Three is right. That's right. Her mother's Canadian author, Justine Wilson. They were married for eight years. She has, I think, six kids just with her. And then the little A-E-I-O-U baby. Did she ever do any music with heart? Because as, as distinct as so. her voice is, there's a mesh there that I think would be really good. She may have turned her nose up at heart. Oh, how dare she? She's also one of these people where she's from Ohio, but feels very Euro. Right. Like how they, Madonna's from Detroit. Right. Some part of Michigan. They went to Europe and I think had bandmates from right. Europe uh -huh. and then sort of made their bones Hold in their Europe style. and then got their style and everything. Right. So you think they're, you, the pretenders are like English, but they're yeah, not. They're not. Mm -mm. Let's please never forget that Johnny Depp is from Kentucky. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's my favorite. Um, more Adele residency in Vegas news, but also kind of not really. Um, that's really looking very unlikely right now. Caesars Palace is trying to squeeze her in before other acts to take the Coliseum uh, near the end of this year. However, union officials confirm they sent home members of the stage construction crew. They were told not to come back until after Labor Day. Adele hmm. said previously that the residency, worth $150 million, by the way, uh, has to happen this year. She's hoping for another baby with thoughts of a 2023 delivery. Her boyfriend of more than a year, that sports agent, Rich Paul, uh, said the last uh, week that he's excited about having kids. So maybe that's why. Is she shedding the weight while they're engaged? I mean, Looks like Is it. he with her while, you know, yeah. while she's still dropping it? Weight? I don't know if she's still. No, she's... I, I mean, I don't think so. But my point is, is are you. Oh, was he in? Okay. Are right. you there with fat Adele? Which mm. means you're in for life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you've been grandfathered in. There's always an appreciation mm. there if you're with Big Adele. Right. And then she's dropping 11 pounds a month. You know, do you sit back and wait till she gets under 140 before you buy the ring? Or do you see which way this wind is blowing? Well, she's going to have another baby. You give a very short window. Mm -hmm. um, they've only been dating since for like a, like last year. Oh, Smart. Come on. Yeah, I I think she's According a pain in the ass. Is that? I'm getting what I'm, that vibe. That's the vibe I'm getting from the from the Instagram. The show can't go on. It's a totally beyond my control situation. God, the the Vegas residency that you know everyone laughed at Elvis uh, right. for taking up all those years ago is now. Oh. 
it's just like having some pot of gold that you never have to go to, but if you want to go mm-hmm. to it and you're Sting or Adele or anybody whose name Celine. we know, yeah. just go on over and crack open that pot of gold. Yeah. And not only is there no shame, but like it's a very glamorous thing to do now where, like you said, it used to be a joke. Right. Wow. Yes. Um, if you have an extra $19 million laying around, you too could have lunch with Warren Buffett. That's how much the record-breaking uh, steak lunch went uh, for with uh, an anonymous bidder. How much? $19 million for one steak lunch. I'll tell you a little bit of what's behind that. Okay. Well, let me just give you the broad strokes. The sale was part of the 21st annual auction for lunch uh, produced uh, with eBay and the Glide Foundation. That's a San Francisco based nonprofit working to combat $19 million worth of water soluble lube really I goes a long it. way That's in the right. Bay Area. That's right. Poverty and hunger and I think it's a black church. My mom's goes there. My mom's my mom <laughs> goes there. I'm serious, Glad Memorial Church. Really? Really? I Look wonder if up. that's related. Amazing. Um, the bidding started at twenty five thousand dollars and ended at nineteen million. The last uh, bidder to win was uh, he paid four and a half million dollars. He was Justin's son. He's an entrepreneur, cryptocurrency guy. Um, this mystery winner though will enjoy a private lunch with Buffett, up to seven guests at Smith and Walensky Steakhouse in New York. And this is the last of the power lunches with Buffett. Um, they're they're not going to do it anymore, but they've raised $53 million for Glide. If I paid $19 million for a lunch with steak, uh, a steak lunch with Warren Buffett, I would not let anyone come with me. That would yeah. be my time with Warren Buffett. Or I charge them all like 750 k yeah. That's exactly right. If I right. recoup. Right. I think the way these things work and the reason they get astronomical, astroglide-nomical, yep. is they... It's a write-off. So you get to write this off. All of it? Well, so now here's the rub. The dry rub? You defer it over the next 100 years. So you have to figure out. So I I can only speak in in car parlances, right? We know. So in the the auction world, they'll do a thing where they'll go like, uh, the first, you know, this Mustang is going to be sent uh we're going to auction this off at barrett jackson in uh, arizona and then the, the money is all going to uh doctors without borders right and so a fifty thousand dollar mustang goes for 1.7 million bucks because the rich people are doing it always looking for mm-hmm. write-offs and they can do it but you still end up getting a car and the government doesn't want you to get a car for free essentially write everything mm-hmm. off but you still have to go the value of the car is still 50 grand like that is right. what you keep in your garage that's worth something so we got to back that out now everything over 50 grand is charity oh. you know so if you're going to write off the lunch with Warren Buffett you have to set a base price on like what would a lunch with Warren Buffett yes. cost what's the you, value if you were just going out to lunch right. with Warren Buffett with seven of your friends. So, yeah, so eight steaks, eight glasses of wine, I, eight I, side dishes. And then what about the bump? Like, it's Warren Buffett. Right. I, I don't know. I right. don't know how the taxes work. I know when you when you hear about all the crazy numbers, it's because some super-duper rich guys are going write, to write the whole thing off. And he, he very much wants to stay anonymous for whatever that's worth. Yeah, because then super-duper rich guys... These days, yeah, don't the want to do it because uh, Elon Musk's snotty little son daughter could get pissed mm-hmm. off at him and then take to Twitter. Right. All right, Shannon Elizabeth is here, so I'm so I'm oh, told. So you bring it home. So maybe we should bring this Let's one. Let's do home. it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Sex called the numbers in bingo. Gina, Gina. Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Shannon, of course, we all know from American Pie and Scary Movie and all those movies like that. But she also has a very interesting uh, foundation where she's Ooh. fighting poachers in Africa. Yes. Uh, so I'm I interested in that. all that. She's also a world-class poker player, which I like. Oh, that's right. And I'm reading here, considered uh, a professional tennis career at some point. Damn. So uh, we'll talk all about that with uh, actor, model, poker player, Shannon Elizabeth, right after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents Shannon Elizabeth's birthday cocktail party for September 7th. Let's see who's invited. Let's welcome the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, Queen of England, Elizabeth I. 
NFL Hall of Fame coach and the namesake of the Cleveland Browns, Paul Brown. Paranormal investigator, the inspiration for the Conjuring movies, Ed Warren. Let's welcome oil magnate and billionaire, John Paul Getty Jr. That'll be the day. Buddy Holly just walked in. Followed by the front woman for the pretenders, Chrissy Hind. A heartbreaker from Gainesville, Florida, Tom Petty's keyboardist, Ben Montench. LA Law's Corbin Burnson just walked in. Evan Rachel Wood is here. And from the cinematic masterpiece, Road Hard, Diane Farr. Shannon Elizabeth is on the Adam Carolla Show. Wow, Chrissy Hines. How the hell did that work out? We're just talking about her. Shannon Elizabeth is here. So much to talk to Shannon about. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me today. So you live in South Africa? Yeah. Yeah, I've spent most of my time in Cape Town, but I'm back here in the U.S. a few times a year doing work, fundraising, films, whatever's needed. What do we need to know about South Africa and Cape Town that maybe we don't know? That it is one of the most beautiful places on earth. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, people go there to get married and go on vacation and to be able to live in a place that everybody's coming to. And I wanted to go for so many years. And I guess me wanting to go, I just manifested living there. Um, is it stable? Is South Africa politically stable now? Um, you know, South Africa has its challenges for sure. But um, the dollar goes really far there. So for Americans to go over, it's a really good place if you're earning in dollars and spending over there. And, and they need the tourism dollar. They welcome it. So it's a good place to go. So give us like an example. Like, I don't know, there's Mexico. Your dollar traditionally goes farther there. Like, like you know, a hotel room here that was 200 bucks a night. Would it be? Well, okay. So lodging there is expensive. Oh, and man. That's, that's what's not going to go far. Um, but you're getting 16 to 1 right now, I think, on the dollar. So. Oh, well, I'll crash at your pad and then yeah, I'll pay for drinks. I have, I have a guest bedroom, so you can crash <laughs> yeah. at our pad. But, I mean, anything that's service human related, like going to a doctor there is not, not expensive compared to here. So a lot of people actually schedule a vacation surgeries and stuff over there and they'll, and you, with the it's flights, a cottage industry for sure. Yeah. With the flights, you're still paying less and they have top, top doctors there. So you're also there doing the, the Lord's work. And I'm curious about how the foundation works and poaching. I'm going to put poaching up there with human trafficking, which yes. is, what year is it? It's yeah. 2022. We still have poachers. It's the same syndicates, actually. So oh, really? everyone that's behind the poaching is also behind human trafficking, drugs, and arms. It's oh. all the same. So it's just any way to make money. Diversifying. Right. Yeah, well, I guess different times of the month is when they focus on different things. They have a whole schedule, but... I mean, for us, full moon is actually called poacher's moon because it lights up the bush and it's easy for them to go out with no flashlights and they get away with a lot more. And are they poaching elephants mainly? Rhinos? Is it all ivory or what else? So it's it's rhino horn, which is a big one. Um, elephant ivory is coming into South Africa, the poaching of that. It's more prevalent in places like Tanzania, but it's it's actually moving down into our area. Mm-hmm. Lion, lion bone trade is a big one. Really? Why? Because oh. it's so. It's, it's something that we Chinese people can get boners. Oh, is that what it is? It, it's all black market going to the east for the most part. I mean, rhino horn is worth more than gold and cocaine. Oh my god! I mean, it's one rhino horn can be up to half a million dollars. Oh. It. What's the lion's bones? They they work? make lion bone and tiger bone tea like they're kind of interchangeable now. So wow. they'll they'll sell the bones to the east and they're starting to use parts of the the animal and so what was uh, legal there is captive lion breeding and that's something that they are trying to make illegal and they've said that they're overturning that to make it illegal but no action's been moved forward on that yet. But like literally there are camps where they're breeding the lions. They bring in volunteers to play with the cubs so that the cubs get used to human interaction. And then as they get older, they put the pictures of those lions on hunting websites. People from overseas pay a lot of money to come kill that lion. 
They will walk into a camp where a lion is completely habituated to humans, walks over, thinks you're going to give him food, is happy to see you, and then gets shot. Oh, yeah. 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 like that. There's nothing, I mean, even for, if, if, if there is such a thing as an ethical hunter, that's not it. Yeah, this is anti-sportsmanship. That is, is horrible. It's horrific. Yeah. It's horrific on every level. And these animals are getting shot up with all kinds of hormones and things. And they're being treated poorly. And they're sometimes underfed. And they're, they're crossbreeding. Like, there's nothing good about it. And there's nothing conservation-based about it. Where's the government land on all this. Well, it is one of the ministers there that has said that they are going to make this illegal now. But since she said that, it's been a year and nothing really has been solidified. So we are working with other organizations there to try to push that agenda forward and support her. Is there corruption? Are they on the take? Are they getting paid? I mean, you, you I don't know if you I can mean, say. Africa. <laughs> there is corruption in Africa. I can't say that there's not. Mm. So, and, and you talk about the um, organizations, the criminal organizations, same with the drugs, same yeah. with uh, the guns, same with human trafficking. Yeah. Is it within Africa or have they expanded? Like there's human trafficking in Mexico yeah. right now. Is it the same groups? Um, I, I believe so. I don't know as much about the, the syndicates that are functioning in areas like South America and other areas. I just know in our area, um, some, you know, you've probably heard about uh, Boko Haram and yep. some of these groups. I mean, they're the ones out there that are, are slowly moving down into Mozambique and South Africa, and they will go into the wild, kill the animals, take the, the horns and the ivory, go sell that on the black market, and then take that money to go buy more drugs and arms and use that to push their agenda. So we, we do a lot of lobbying in D.C., and when we're talking to senators and congressmen, the way that we can sometimes make them understand what's actually happening is, have you had anyone killed in the war on drugs mm. or on guns killed in the war? And when they say yes, it's like, well, most likely those were bought with the illegal, through the illegal wildlife trade with um, wildlife trafficking. So you can make that connection there. And that's, that's how everyone all over the world is connected to wildlife trafficking mm. in a way. Because we've all been touched by something. And most likely it's traced back to these syndicates. Ew. It's yeah. such a, I'm so disappointed. I'm older than you guys, but you, you got hold of me in 1984 and asked me what the future was going to be like 2022. Oh, I know. World peace, high tech, <laughs> Rhino, yeah. lean. Windmills, Rhino poaching would have been pretty power, far down the line. Yeah, Just the human race is all we care uh, about. Have you seen the opening of the Jetsons? I figure oh. it's going to be something pretty <laughs> on par. Yeah. I think it's with coming. That. <laughs> It'd be nice, but it, it, is, I've, it is weird as we move toward crazy feats of technology the half the world is sliding back into yeah. some into these trades into these activities that are thousands of years old like bleh. Yeah. i wish we could get it together well let's talk about happier things okay um being a poker champion <laughs> i wish i knew what that was like <laughs> well, could you make money playing poker? Can can the average person make money? Can you have can you? Me. I have in the past, but I'm not doing it now, so it would be very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I, I'd have to get lucky. Is how? What was your best? Uh, you know, tournament ranking um, night. Well, my best tournament was I did the NBC Heads Up Championship. And it, so it was one-on-one, -on -one, very much like a, a tennis kind of like a draw, brackets or, draw brackets. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, I got down to the final two groups and ended up going out third, third or wow. yeah, third, I think. So, um, so that was 125,000. Oh, really? Yeah. So that was probably my best payday. <laughs> That's amazing. It's weird. Po that was lucky. <laughs> Poker is so attractive to some people and then others are so put off to it. Now, I guess what's attractive is the strategy and the sort of cunning and the outwitting mm. the, the others. And then the others are turned off. Like, I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to lose. I'm going to be exposed. I don't know what Brian, you tell us. Well, I was, I was going to say, Shannon, you please correct me where I'm wrong. I'm a, 
minor poker enthusiast, not to your level, but the poker life, if you want to make that your life, is a very sad, isolating life. Like, it's not yeah. fun. It's not romantic. It's yeah. not sexy. It's not the movies. It's not Hollywood. It's depressing. <laughs> it's fun to play with, like, friends and in tournaments and stuff, but, like, to make a living as a grinder, mm. that's not fun. Yeah, grinding isn't fun. I mean, you're sitting at the tables for 12 hours day after day. The World Series is multiple-day event. You really do have to be in shape. You have to still go to the gym. You still need to work out because doing this position of leaning no. forward, everything starts to yeah. ache after a few hours. And no and one's really dark. friendly. I mean, I guess some people are, but like yeah. they're there to compete and win and intimidate or, or psych you out or whatever it is. They're not there to make friends. Yeah, but the other side of it is when I got into it, it was to raise money for my charity. That's actually why I first started playing. Well, that's the best case scenario. I mean, I, w I was invited to go on, go on Bravo's Celebrity Poker Showdown. I had no idea how to play. They literally took me backstage and taught me before the show. <laughs> Is that the one with Dave Foley? Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember that. I, I remember watched that, that one. Show. I yeah. watched that show. So, what do you got? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, so I obviously didn't do well then, but I had some of the pros come over because it became a trend for a while. So I'm like, I want to learn this game. And I didn't get it at first. I'm like, so you just get cards and bet on them. That's no fun. You don't get to discard. I don't get it. And then one day it clicked, and it was a psychological game. And then I started to get that it's not about the cards. It's the people, and it's outwitting. And I'm like, okay, now this is fun. <laughs> and, and being able to be sponsored to wear a logo and go play and it's not nice. spend my own money, because I, I didn't have the money to spend. But I was able to go and play and learn, and if I made money – Great. And sometimes it was for me. Sometimes it was for my charity. Most of the time it was my charity making the money. But I wasn't really losing other than my soul at times <laughs> because it was hard. <laughs> you know, and sure. for me, I'm very competitive. So it did get depressing after a while. And I realized the universe, no matter what I did, was not letting me win. When I went out in a World Series event on the first level of the day with a full house oh, to a bigger bad full beat. house, oh, no. I'm like, okay, so the universe is pushing me in another <laughs> yeah. direction. I need to go find what that is. It, so. um, where are we at with sunglass wearing? Mm. I say get rid of it. Mm. I say, sorry, we got rules. I That's like taking an oxygen tank up Everest. It's, it's yeah. not great. It doesn't really make a difference, it I don't think. You well, like good, to think it does, it. but it doesn't. <laughs> get rid of it. If you can't keep There's that There's so many other face. tells. It's not even in the eyes most of the time. <laughs> it doesn't stop there, as you know. People wear headphones. People wear the other hoodies up. Yeah. It's, it's a very antisocial game for a game that involves eight people at the same table. Right. And so, it, yeah, sorry, sometimes it's just your chest. If you can see your chest, you go red. Or if yeah. your leg is bouncing, it's other things wow. that you don't even know you're doing. And then you could think you're covering everything up, I, but you still have a tell. I don't want to see the sombrero, or the welder's mask, <laughs> right. or the Beats by Dre. You play in your underpants. Oh, I mean, sure. This like pure. This. I'm sure. Like, yeah. You can't bring in a bunch of props. Well, there's that great meme that's like, if you ever feel like, you know, stupid or you've made a big mistake in your life, please just look at the picture of Kim Kardashian playing poker in mirrored sunglasses. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so everyone can see her oh, hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> uh, did you recently get married? I did. I Mazda. did. <laughs> How long yes. ago? Uh, last April. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, so we, we very quietly got married in South Africa in our backyard Lovely. with our dog. And yeah. Next to my room? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Next to your room. Yard off my room. <laughs> yeah. Don't like a lot of noise. But I mean, you're gonna have to come quick. I think we're moving. So. Oh really? But well, we'll try but to you'll move into a place with a spare room. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> we'll always have a spare room. Um, married. So you've just been four, five. What are we? Three months or whatever. Uh, married? Fresh? No, no, oh, no. Wait. It was last year. So oh, just oh, over I'm a year. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just over a year. I I thought it was. Just, I'm like, no. what are we at? We're in June. <laughs> no, it's, it's the COVID fog. Yeah. But also, it was uh, breaking news. So yeah, I sure. figured uh, I shortened it up. <laughs> so, congratulations. Who Thanks. is this man? His name is Simon Borchard, and he works on the foundation with me. Oh. I was introduced to him when I was over there trying to learn about conservation. And a mutual friend introduced us because he grew up in conservation. His family founded a magazine called Africa Geographic. His dad is a very well-known conservationist in South Africa. So mm -hmm. we, we got together. We rebranded the program and the, the charity. We pulled his dad out of retirement mm -hmm. to work with us. And, and we're running programs, and we're doing everything we can. Is there right. any danger in being a conservationist in a place where a lot of people are making a lot of money and they don't have a lot of morals, mm -hmm. and uh, you get this legislation passed, and it's going to cut into their 
bottom line and must yeah. be some yeah. danger involved with that. Yeah, there there definitely can be. There's been a lot of cases where people are run off the road unexpectedly right. or accidentally shot or something. So yes, there is. And we we do dabble in work that could go in that into that area, that danger zone. And we've talked about it and we've said that if we're doing everything we can to be true to ourselves and our mission and to help the animals and the people there, then if we die doing it, then then so be it. That's, we're doing what we're meant to be doing. I mean this on so many levels. We need so many more Shannon and Elizabeths in the world. I agree, but I may not be coming by the house. <laughs> no. I may just go ahead and spend that extra 40 bucks and stay at the red roof or whatever's up the street. I understand. <laughs> Uh, during the daylight hours, I'll swing mm. by for a drink, but okay. we'll keep it at that. Um, so uh, American Pie, is that, is that where the big break, is that the big breakout? Because yeah. I feel like that's where I would know you from. Yeah, I that was the first studio film. 1999? Nine? Yeah. 1999, oh yeah. my God. I know, what, wasn't that back when the man show was happening? Some, yeah, I, in there? it was. I'll tell you why, because of this very weird, vague recollection mm -hmm. of me and Jimmy and Daniel, who all shared an office doing the man show at Hollywood Center Studios, went to a movie theater that was off of, um, well, what I would call Laurel and Sunset or Laurel and Holl Laurel Hollywood, Laurel and Sunset, where that big corner mall thing yeah, is. Yeah, Crescent, the, the Lemley's there. Crescent, whatever. And we mm -hmm. went there and somebody said, oh, we have a sneak preview or whatever. And we all went there in 99 and <laughs> saw it and uh, enjoyed it. I loved it. Great Thought movie. it was awesome. funny. I love that. Yeah, we're normally <laughs> comedy snobs. So, but it was, yeah. a, it was, a, it was kind of a different era. And um, it was a time when you could take a you know medium sized movie and have people break out right from oh, there was, it. There wasn't so much noise at the time. Correct me if I'm wrong. There was no one notable in the cast except for Eugene Levy, maybe. But right. like they were all young stars yeah. who went on to great success. Jason Biggs, Tara Reid, Sean William Scott, yeah. on and on and on and on and on. And that was on purpose, apparently. They Allison weren't Hannigan looking for song. names. Yeah, yeah. yeah they oh, didn't wow. want to put any names in it. So apparently that was the goal. It was a throwback movie. It was very porky. It was, it was, it was all those. Fast but times. It, was, it also ushered in a whole new era of sort of raunchy comedy, which you still see movies like that. They're old and new at the same time. Yeah. Did you have any idea what you're signing up for? Like, did you know it was going to be what it was? No, no idea. I was happy to get a studio film and... And then when I was doing the, um, the voiceover work after we had completed filming, they were playing with my accent and they were playing with it in ADR. And after that, they kept saying, do less, do less, do less. Like she's been here for a while. So after that, I remember telling my friends, oh, this movie's going to suck. <laughs> I was so upset. <laughs> I thought it was going to be so bad because I didn't like the way we were playing with my accent. Weren't you supposed to be Russian? Uh, Czechoslovakian. Czechoslovakian. Yeah. Though, yeah. That's right. Did you have to do that in the audition? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But I, I had done one other time. I did an episode of Arliss. I don't know if you remember Robert that. Wall. Just talking about Robert Wall. Well, there wow. you go. <laughs> I did what an episode day. of Arliss where I played a Russian tennis player. Wow. And like nobody really knows that because it was <laughs> before. So I kind of had done an accent like that before. And I grew up playing tennis. And so That's I had a little funny. practice, I guess. It was so weird. We're just looking at Robert Wall, yeah. and I was like, "When was that show? Arliss. HBO or yeah. Showtime?" And he was a sports agent, yeah. and yeah. it was like a big vehicle thing yeah. Yeah. back. HBO, Showtime, yeah, HBO, HBO, HBO. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was my whole reel at the time. That was one of my first bigger projects. So I took everything else off my reel and just gave him that episode. <laughs> nice, smart. <laughs> so and then uh, everything changed after after that for you. Yeah. But when did uh, so then when did the thoughts about you know giving it all up and moving into the conservation world and leaving the country and all that well, start creeping in? So after American Pie, it was the first time I was in a position to give back, and that's I was very into dog rescue <laughs> and dogs, and I went around LA. Um, you thought, got to go bigger. Well, no, no. I started a charity called Animal Avengers. Oh, nice. So it was dog and cat rescue here in L.A. and ran it that way for over 10 years and then 
kind of realized I wanted to help more animals on a bigger scale. And was I utilizing this platform I was given to the best of my ability? Because a lot of organizations are looking for people with some sort of a reach to help them. And I felt like I wasn't doing enough with, with the gift I was given of that. And I don't have the biggest platform, but I have something. And I, I just wanted to do more. And I kind of went on this journey of discovery and it led me to conservation. So I first went over there to start learning about conservation in 2015. And I did a crowdfunder online and, and raised like $30,000. So I picked three nice. charities over there and bought supplies for them, like 10,000 each in supplies. And brought over there a bunch of vet supplies that people had bought here on Amazon. So I came over with a big suitcase of supplies for them in that sense. And just started learning and interviewing people and just asking questions. Because I, I didn't know anything about conservation or the poaching crisis. So I didn't know how I could help. And so we're always trying to analyze, like, what are our strengths and what can we bring to this? And how can we widen that audience? Because quite often conservation tends to talk to conservation. So how do you reach the rest of the world and a wider audience in that? Because that's really important for them. So that's that's one of my big things is trying to help widen that audience. You know what's so amazing about that? We talk a lot on the show about curiosity and how, like, if you want your child to be born with one thing, you want them to be born with curiosity. Yeah. And so many of us, I think, are either just lazy or scared. It's like, I don't know anything about that. Like, what am I good at? What, what can I do? But you're just like... I don't know anything. I'll go learn. And now look at this empire. Well, I think sometimes you just know when when there's there's something you're meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I was I was actually living in New York. I moved out there in like 2014. And I was checking Instagram one night. I was going to dinner, but I said something said check Instagram. So I'm looking and I'm literally putting on my makeup. I stopped putting on my makeup to check Instagram. And I don't know why. And I came across this video of this elephant that had been poached and the ranger was scanning the scene with his phone and you see the trunk off to one side separated and then you see the rest of the elephant and you hear him say this poor baby's been out here all night suffering and in that moment you see her move Mm. and my whole body just I got chills it flipped a switch in me I started crying I couldn't stop crying for days no sex for whoever you're going out to dinner with (laughs) Date night. It date wasn't a date, night luckily. The <laughs> makeup was ruined. Yeah. So, oh. but you, it just flips the switch in you, mm-hmm. and you know that's what you're meant to do. And that's but most your mission. people, I, I'm the same way. It is so horrific that I just keep walking. Like I feel like I, I would be destroyed if I ever looked at that that video. So I'm not gonna. I'm not right. going to watch it because right. I it, I would just be like, oh, it's awful. Also, it's it's kind of two things. It's like a. Uh, this poor elephant, and then B, what the fuck is up with humanity? Yeah. Like, how many of these people are roaming around yeah. that can physically do this? Now I'm scared that these people, you know, live mm-hmm. amongst us. And then the other thing, you know, it's kind of like drugs. It's sort of like, well, there's there's two sides of drugs. There's the, there's the cartels that are providing the drugs, and then there's the people that are doing the drugs. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple different heads on it. You know, the right's like, we got to stop those cartels. And the left's like, well, if we could get people to stop doing the drugs and get them some counseling, then we'd dry it up. And both sort of work. I mean, there's an argument for both. But so, you know, one side of it is protecting the elephants. The other side is, hey, China, what the fuck with the lion tea? Like launching awareness campaigns in the markets that are actually providing the profit. And there's another side of it as well. So when it comes to poaching, the syndicates, there's like nine levels of it. The lowest level are the people in the local villages that live outside that reserve that are getting paid to go in and actually do the poaching. So... So now you have to look at why they're accepting that job because they're hungry. They can't eat. They can't make money. Right. And if you are starving and you have a family and you can't feed your family, you'll do anything to to make them happy and comfortable and feed yourself. So if somebody says, all you have to do is go in the park. Here's a gun. Here's um, a pango, which is a long knife. All you have to do is go in and come back with the horns and these supplies, and I will give you $5,000. That's more than they might make all year or multiple years. They're like, okay, okay. So they'll go in, and maybe it's a group of two or three of them, but they have to come back with everything or they, they might die. 
they do it once and they're successful and they've got money and now they can eat. Mm-hmm. So, so it brings us to like one of our other programs. It's working with those communities, getting a piece of land and bringing them into that land. So they're actually vested in the animals being alive and that becomes their livelihood and giving them careers and alternative means of income that far exceeds that $5,000 because then they actually protect you and protect the animals. So that's the socioeconomic conundrum we have to, to deal with. So you, you know, got a, yeah, you got the beginning, the middle, but yeah. still the end. Are we dealing the, the diplomatically with yeah. these countries that yeah. think it's a good idea to make tea out of lion's bones? Well, and the way I look at that is with a lot of those countries, it's almost like religion. They mm-hmm. don't know if it's it's actually working in the medicine, but they just have faith that it is. Mm-hmm. So they keep doing it because they believe it's helping them. But the younger generations are the ones saying, no, mom and dad, please don't do this anymore. There's nothing in it. It's mixed with other things. They're mixing it with other actual medicines. Right. So you think it's working, but it's not doing anything. So we try to appeal to that younger generation. And so as they grow up, it starts to become mm-hmm. something not cool, obsolete, and they can start not doing that. Um, so I think my, you have to hit many angles. Right. If I started like snorting rhino horn, my daughter would be like oh. so devastated. She'd go full Elon Musk daughter. She would like, disown you. Yeah, it's a good point because you have to, the people that are into it are old and into it and it's a cultural thing or maybe they grew up around it or something, but that next generation's got to go, this is insane. And That's- if you're if you're at all on the fence with elephants, I, f- I don't do anything helpful. I just like to follow the, the conservations on Instagram. You see one baby elephant take a bottle from a human and hold it in their little trunk and drink their bottle. You'll never want to hurt them again. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. and same with the, <laughs> sure the rhino babies. I mean, <laughs> oh. we work with a lot of orphanages that bring in the rhino babies because they'll push, push the moms. Oh, yes. And quite often there's a baby there with them. And if you don't bring them in immediately, if you don't find them, then the the hyenas, the wild dogs, the lions, they'll, they'll get them. And quite often they're traumatized. They've mm-hmm. watched their mom get killed. And they'll, they're out there sitting by the body. They won't Please leave her man. side. Yeah. So it's traumatizing. And it's so such a difficult thing to go through. But once you've seen it and you see that you can start trying to make a difference and help, then that's your calling. So for those of us who don't live there and, and like Adam, like don't have the stomach for it, where do we send the check? <laughs> Shan Elizabeth Foundation. Great. So shanelizabeth.org is our website. And we, we take donations. And... We're, we've got all kinds of programming. If people want to reach out to us, there's emails on there, and we do all kinds of bigger programs. We're, we have a blind black rhino that we take care of right now, and we're putting together a breeding program with him. His name's Munu, and we're filming it to make a – we want to make a documentary, a docu-series that's actually happy about rhino and not all about the poaching crisis, but like a love story. All right, we'll take a quick break. We have uh, some business because I'm heading to Denver and Shannon's going to Denver too. Probably yeah. be front row for my shows. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Well, Shannon's going to help us vet some of these calls for ball pullers right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam, Dennis, get it on. A, I used to have the same problem sleeping, and a dentist buddy of mine who is well-renowned told me to use a two-inch wide piece of that micropore tape from 3M. I tape my mouth shut, and I breathe through my nose. I tape my mouth shut, simple answer, and it works beautifully. No dry mouth, just an awesome night's sleep, side, front, or back. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. We should use that tape before he made that call. (laughs) Number one, don't leave it on the nightstand because uh, your wife could get hold of it. And no means no. (laughs) Talk to the tape, bitch. I kind of get it. I, I, okay. You guys tell me Shannon back sleeper, side sleeper, face sleeper. I try to sleep on my back as much as possible. Good. Mouth breather, nose breather. Oh, you know, I've always had sinus problems. Mm-hmm. So I probably, even walking around during the day, I, I breathe through my mouth too much. It's actually not good for you. He's actually right. You should be breathing through ta- your nose. Because yeah. there's, there's, 
value to that and you've got the hairs that are cleaning it. Like I've had a lot of doctors say there's a lot of value to that. And so I don't do it right. <laughs> Brian, back sign. You're probably a back. Yeah, back. Oh, Occasionally I side. knew it. Occasionally side and you're nose. So reader. jealous. Right. And nose. Nose. Back and, and nose. nose. I oh, knew nose. it. You don't want to wrinkle your face when you sleep. You want to. I actually yeah. sleep with a pillow called to save my face pillow. I, I heard Carmen Electra talk about it like 20 years ago, and I looked it up, and it's it, it's it called works. a hemorrhoid donut. It works. Sweetie. It totally works. So I've been sleeping with that, and I travel with it I, I, everywhere. Like, oh, yeah, she's right. So you, you, you will mash your, your face. face in the edge of that. Oh, it's, this is great. I put it on top of my normal pillow because there's not a lot of volume. To right. Me. I get the small one. It, I just think it's a better shape. It works. I, I wish I got money from this company. It works. <laughs> <laughs> so, highly recommend it. All right. Gina, back. Nose. Side. Side? Side, and these days, nose. Yeah, because oh, I good. also had sinus problems, but good. not nose. Yeah, mm. I'm like face and mouth, and it's a shit show. But I, I get the tape thing. You train yourself, because yeah. the problem is you'll fall asleep, then your mouth opens up, and then right. you switch. Mm. All right, so uh, Brent's at the top. It was a scuba instructor in Asia. Ooh la la. Now sells software and is single. He wants to pull for Friday night. This is the early show, Friday night. Brent? Adam, mijo. Mijo? What's going on? Adam, Gina, Paul. Great yeah. to be calling in and uh-huh. hear from all of you. Yeah, you want to pull. So you're a scuba instructor in Asia. I was. Uh, re- I actually started off in, in sales, and uh, throughout my younger life, just uh, partied quite a bit. I had a dog who passed away when I was 30, so I took a year off of my life and became a scuba instructor in Asia because I was so heartbroken. Wow. Wow. So you had a pet die, and you decided to leave the country? Correct, yes. Wow. Well, it's kind of Shannon's story. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't back yeah. over a rhino when she was drunk, <laughs> leaving the driveway. True, true. Um, Correct. So, yeah. so Brent, scuba instructor in Asia, that's pretty broad. Like, whereabouts? Yeah, a little tiny island in Koh Tao, which is in the Gulf of Thailand, right next to a little place called Koh Phen Yang, which is, if you've ever heard of the full moon parties, which happened once a month, basically an all-night island party, you know, all the accoutrements that you could think of. And, uh, yeah, right. it's, so it's there's a good like, time. Caught a lot of folks. We've covered full moon poaching, and yeah. now we're on a full moon party. Lots can be done during a full moon. Yeah. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. Correct. Yeah. And uh, you're teaching tourists, right? Correct, yeah. Actually, a fun fact is Kotal, that little tiny island, uh, does more scuba certifications than anywhere else. On planet Earth. Whoa. That is fun. I wonder, uh, yeah. I was thinking about uh, Richard Blade, the old DJ from K Rock, who went off to go start his own scuba oh, shop and dive. Oh, he retired and moved oh. off and was doing the scuba thing. Now oh, he's yeah. back on, you know, the 80s channel on oh, Sirius yeah. XM. Mm-hmm. But uh, remember Richard Blade from K Rock, Shannon? No. No, you didn't, weren't a K-Rock listener back in Los Angeles back in the day? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't remember that name. <laughs> he had the big uh, English accent. Richard Blade, a flashback yeah, lunch. Yeah, he would do, it was all, he was like Mr. 80s music yeah. guy. And a good dude, I worked with him, Carrick. But he knocked off to go somewhere to, and I think it was somewhere in your neighborhood. Anyway, all I'm right. in the Caribbean. He went to the Caribbean and then came back, I guess. Anyway, um, so Brent. I'm I'm not blown yeah. away. Oh my god! Okay. Like, I gotta tell you, so, I'm, look, so I'm being upfront with you. The, 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 the crux of my story is actually I've been listening to you since the Orange Couch days. Uh, I've officially been sober for about two and a half years. I got sober two and a half years ago to try and get back with my girlfriend of six years. Um, long story short, we're not together. I've been trying showing her the way i'm still single um and i'm hopeful maybe if i can get on stage and share this podcast with her that she'll oh, love wow. me again and that- we'll have the ability to be happy again to adam oh, oh boy <laughs> i kind of did you hang up on it? shannon what it, i'll tell you what let me let me talk to our next uh 
contestant, for lack of a better term, Brent. Let me let me see how Ben is feeling. I, I like the angle. Is you she going to be in the audience, or she's just going to hear the podcast? Well, I do have two tickets, but she knows that I listen to the show. We used to go on road trips, listen to it all the time. She enjoys it, so thoughts are, mm. you know, I've already offered the invite, but send the link to the show as well. Kyle Dunnigan's going to be uh, up for the Saturday early show, by the way, just in case people want to okay. laugh. All right. Be careful, Brent. You might knock him off the wagon. Oh, that's or true. Yeah, careful, careful, right? Much, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Shannon? Or, what What are we looking for here? Is it supposed to be funny, impressive? Like, impressive. what is the contest? We're looking for entertaining but knows their place. Like, I look for in a partner. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, Brian and I. I agree with, let's let's see what Ben has to say Good. and then compare. Mm, smart. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Let's kick some tires. Ben? Ace man. Happy to talk to you. Friday early show. Pulling balls. What, what do you got? got? Um, side sleeper, nose breather, oh, um, okay. 42, skateboarder. Ooh. Not sure what else I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Still skateboarding strong. This uh, skateboarding thing, we can blame Tony Hawk. People are now taking this into their early 50s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And this is something you're supposed to get <laughs> yeah. out of your system at 13. Right. We had no idea. Oh, as, you, yes. as you record this, it's International Go Skateboarding Day, so you'll probably hear a bunch of skateboard sounds going by here shortly. I'll tell that to the Juneteenth <laughs> people. Move over. All right, There's Brent a new is. cause in <laughs> town. Yeah, Brent it is. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Probably <laughs> annoying citizens since well, the 80s. What does Ben do for a living? I'm a database nerd, so I can read well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you read on ping pong balls? That'll be helpful. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Now, in terms of skating, are we learning new tricks or trying to hang on to old tricks at this age? Definitely the latter. It's harder every year. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Hmm. Do you pick your chicks or... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, what's your Thanks, Brian. what's your status? Uh, I, on Tinder or what do you mean? Oh, <laughs> single, oh, yeah. single look I want to know. Mail. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's complicated. I don't know. Is that still a thing? I know I'm married, um, but I'll be solo at the show for now. Yeah, uh, it is complicated. This is important. Right. That's right. Could we tell you were a skater by looking at you? Do you wear van yeah. slip-ons? Right. Um, yes, Uh-oh. unfortunately, oh, I, I, I know that's a strike, uh, that's but a, what can you do? Do you, have a, do you have a wallet chain? Nope. Oh, nope. thank God. That's not a skater thing, Sorry. is it? It's not? It is. It is? I, I, I was with you on that. Yeah. Uh, like, he's the, for sure saying yes. Yeah, when did the biker it. make it over to the skater? Oh, in high school, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Wallet chain for a skateboarder? I think so. I don't think it's I exclusively it. skateboarders, but like it's the style. style. It started as biker. Wallet yeah, chain? and punk rocker guy. Yeah. But then bike wallet chain was biker, <laughs> and then you could either be a biker or a skater. So the fact that it they made that. its way, Dawson, you got. I, I never saw the wallet chain on a skateboarder. It was yeah. always the uh, really. The, it's biker. The hipster dude with the cuffs in his pants. Well, Brian, can we, can we find out more about what the vans look like? Are yeah. they fluorescent? Do they have checkers on Smart. them? Smart. Good. Yeah. No. Did you draw? Do you draw your own animation and cartoons on them? <laughs> They're slip-ons. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. And you're in your 40s. Yeah. No, just the black ones. Yeah. I'm. I'm old. I don't need to be loud and proud. Mm. He just called 40 old. Do we? I yeah. know. Do we have? So, is there a chain on the wallet? I can't remember now. No. No, no but you know there is crossover to you know. To Gina's credit, there is crossover there. I mean, I ride motorcycles too. I just don't have the wallet chain. Kind of, mo- <laughs> yeah. Chain was super seventies biker. I didn't and even then know it that. Spilled into other arenas, but it makes sense. Yeah, the you biker. You think it's a skateboarder? Mm. Well, you have to have good balance. Yeah, I know. Always- that's a that's a that's a hot trip to the hospital if you bail. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always thought I thought it was called a biker chain. All right, anyway. Um, what yeah. kind of motorcycle do you have? Uh, I got a Honda Rebel 1100. Oh, it's fun. Yuck. <laughs> a fucking disaster. <laughs> yeah. That Thank is you. a shit show. Uh, I mean, you got 1100 cc's. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Rebel's been around since like the 80s, right? Yeah, but this is the first year that they put out the uh, bigger engine. Uh no. I was like, oh, I got I, I got a better Subaru Justy than the one you're thinking of. 
<laughs> Mine's got three and a half there cylinders. The Rebel. Oh, I, I was going to carve out some sort of Moto Guzzi spot for you, no. but the Honda yeah. Rebel. Ugh. I mean, right. I think Ben sealed not, his fate. Yeah, with you ride That's it right. with the slip-ons. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I, all the gear, all the time. Okay. <laughs> all right. The Honda Rebel was a goofy little stupid motorcycle that was supposed to look like you had a Harley, but okay. you could only afford a cheap Honda. Right. It's back the tough in skins the 80s. of motorcycles, and it'll look okay yep. in a photograph, but realize it's teeny. Like if I you see. took a regular size guy and put it on, it would be a sad. Well, let me look at it. What year's your Rebel? Twenty twenty one. So bringing, bringing the rebel back is, is like when they decide to do Land of the Lost, the film. You know what I mean? I was like, are you kidding me? I think if it was really a rebel, sure. you wouldn't have to say you're a rebel. You'd just be a rebel. You would oh, be a rebel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's right. my least favorite part about it is the name. I think it's so stupid, but mm-hmm. it is what it is. You're trying to claw his way back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just trying to agree with us now. <laughs> All right, but look, I like the biker slash skateboarder. I mean, that does show some rank. Range. Yeah. And really what's working in your corner right now is a super unimpressive Brent. who's just not bringing a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, to Brent's the, table. the safe choice. Poor Brent. I'm looking at the new Rebel. It doesn't look too bad compared to the old uh, the old Rebel. Though this guy could have breathed on his a little. Uh, is it black on black with like the black frame and a brown seat? No, I got the uh, Bordeaux red. So mm-hmm. it's kind of this wine color. It's mm-hmm. really pretty, actually. All right. All right. How twins? Twin? Yeah, parallel twin. All right. Fun. Okay. Right. <laughs> what shift pattern? One down, five up. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right. Porto red. All right. All right. I'm looking at this bike. You got to show me the Rebel, like circa 1985. I mean, it's a. It's a shit show. This is looking a lot better. This is helping, Ben. I mean, his bike yeah, isn't pulling fun. balls. That's right. The bike's not. Yeah, but it's going to get him there. Him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll I'll be there the balls. <laughs> oh, you're right. The ones from the mid 80s looked uh, sparse, let's say. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, it, it, we got to do some soul searching. So hang on. Yeah. All right. All right. Agreeable. How you? Yeah, look at the old one. Blah. It just seems Ugh. like Nothing. there's a lot missing. It's, it's a loser mobile. Yeah. John Connor escaped Got the like... Terminator on that. That's right. <laughs> uh, ben, now Brent's yep. sober. Which is fine. Oof. I like someone who's got a little lube working before they hit the stage. Oh, you know, just take the edge off, but not over, not sloppy. You don't get crazy. Maintain. This might be strike two, but I'm also sober. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, man. That's funny. <laughs> Couldn't you get loaded and ride that motorcycle just one night? <laughs> God, <laughs> That's funny. definitely. Uh, All right, hang on. I don't know, Shannon. I mean, I, Brent went to Asia. <laughs> I mean, he he that, that takes yeah. Yeah. yeah that takes guts. I mean, just yeah. to get up and go. And he was mourning his dog, which of course I love. Yeah, I love anyone who loves their animals so much that. That they take something into account to change their lives. I and, mean, yeah. we're for sure splitting hairs here. But, yeah, I like, I, I get what Shannon's saying, for sure. And he's trying to get his girlfriend back. Yeah. Yeah. And don't sabotage it by Is talking shit. a strike shit. or a plus? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, Brent? That's me. Yep. All right, so what I'm going to say to you is you've been awarded first base, but not because you got a hit. <laughs> Catch your interference. Catch your yeah, interference. Catch or you're hit by a ball or something. But I'm, go ahead and trot to first base, okay? I love, I love it. Yes. It's not because you made solid contact. It. Far from it. You got to okay. walk. Thanks, Brent. Oh, man. All right. Ben. Uh, we love you. Sorry for the prejudging on the Rebel motorcycle. Brent just kind of just inched you out. But thanks for listening, brother. Oh, big fan. Happy to talk to you. Thanks, Take man. Take care. All right, Saturday, uh, early show, we go to... Uh, These are the two best qualified candidates on earth. <laughs> Saturday, early show, we go with uh, Kyle up first. Kyle runs a fleet Mi-ho? department for Ford. Meho! Yeah, what do you do? Oh, I run a fleet department for a Ford dealership. Mm-hmm. Oh. What does that mean? I sell to all the businesses and... Um, national fleet companies who buy 
boards, I can get their cars ready for them at the store. Is the guy you want to ask for if you're walking in the dealership? Mm-hmm. Send me your fleet manager. Absolutely. Do you mm-hmm. donate to charities? Ooh. My dealership donates to the Cancer Foundation every year. That's Acceptable. their biggest okay. donation partner. Good. Okay. We'll take it. All right. All right. All right. Where are you working out of? What city? Yeah. Littleton, Colorado. Oh, so you came, I'm reading here you were at the uh, barbecue last weekend. Yeah, I'm still in California right now. I had to oh. catch a flight tonight back to Denver to come see you in my hometown. Who was your favorite person to meet at the barbecue? Ooh. Ooh. Um, so last year it was Matt Fondelier. Um, like one. This year I met another fan who was like my best friend, apparently that I didn't know I had. We had like everything in common. We were sat in the front row for lit and we just hit it off and had a great time. Nice. I love that none of us made the cut. That's a nice story and shows that Kyle's a Greek. You can get along with Kyle. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, you're not that impressive, Tina. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I was wearing a dress, goddammit. <laughs> All right, Kyle. I like the yeah. fact that you made the pilgrimage yeah. out here to come to the barbecue. Now it's is, your turn to repay. Second him. year in a row. It's big. Two Ooh. years oh, running. Boy. All right, hang tight. Okay. Let's see what Joseph has to say. Joseph. Hi, guy. Hi, guy. Let's see. How's you, it going? You're a uh, you're veteran? Yeah, I was in the Army for about five years, deployed twice to Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris might be able to guess what my first duty station was because he was just there a few few weeks ago. Mm. Rome? Buongiorno. <laughs> <laughs> Buongiorno. You're in Italy? Vicenza, Italy. Wow. Nice. All right. See any action? Yeah. Yeah, I deployed to Afghanistan twice uh, with the unit 173rd. They made a movie about it called Restrepo. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. I saw that. All right. So, uh, yeah. you know. A hero. Given, given back. Oh, I, no. I like that. I had to read the second thing. Got rid of his car. Now rides a bike. <laughs> <laughs> what kind that's of bike? Right. On the Rebel 750? It's probably the only thing I disagree with you on, Ace Man, is... I think cars ruin cities, but I ride my bike everywhere. I take my son to daycare on our bike. I like that. Listen, you can. I used to ride at ten speed everywhere. You can kick ass on a bike. the The problem is, is well, there's a little topography. Like I can't get from where I live to here on on a bike. It's just not practical. But if you got to just kind of buzz around town, it's good. It's just I, I, I'd like more people to do it. Yes, Shannon. He, uh, I'm just reading what it says, and he just made a beautiful statement about how cars ruin cities, so he's not driving a car, but he's a big fan of F1. <laughs> that is a well good... Done. That well is done. He's a big fan of F1, so I don't understand. <laughs> and that's the, that's the other part is I love cars that go fast just where they're supposed to go fast, on a racetrack, mm. not you know down a residential street. So. All right. and, More of a noise pollution Adam, I will thing. say, F1 does shit on your sports are the ultimate... Uh, autocracy or meritocracy, meritocracy yeah. uh, because you've got two racers, uh, Nikita Mazepin um, on Haas for, for last year, whose dad owned the team or, or was a big sponsor. And, and then Schumacher. Lance Stroll as well. Oh, what about Aston Schumacher? Martin, whose dad owns the team. Yeah, but there is an element of these guys start driving go-karts when they were five. I mean... I have room for, you're right, it's it's a mega dollar sport, and occasionally a lesser driver gets into a car because he can bring in, right. his his dad was Schumacher, seven-time yeah. world champion, and he can bring some more sponsorship. A lot of it is about who you can bring, sponsorship-wise. But it's if a, you suck, you suck, you're not going to be. Yeah, nobody will suck. If someone will be three three hundredths of a second faster right. and that'll be enough for that person to never beat that other person. Right. So there's a little bit of that, but you watch F1 drive to survive Joseph. Oh, uh, the Netflix. Yeah. The Netflix documentary is the best. I've watched every season so far. And how are you getting to the venue on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> so my wife does have a car. We're either car or Uber it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Shannon, what do you think? I mean, he's full of contradictions there. I mean, I was all for the saving the planet, and then he kind of, like, crashed and burned with everything. Well, he's just watching, you know, like, 
let's not blame the guys who are into kitty porn. That's right. <laughs> they don't produce He's it. He's not making it. It's going to exist whether we watch it or not. They're simply sitting at their computers. That was Jerry I mean, I, argument. I, right. Of the two, I do have to vote for him. For you have Joseph. to go for Joe. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Kyle, we'll see you next year at the barbecue, brother. Uh, see you next year. Sorry, Aww. man. Well, we we'll you, see. You, we'll see you Saturday night anyway. I'll come out and say hi to you if you come out. I'll do all that. Thank you. And uh, Joseph? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And for the best, too, you can't have two Kyles at the... Oh, uh, that's early, a good uh, point. Yes. Show All right. All right. Again, yeah. and in, so. All right. It, once, it just makes we, sense. we got it. We once know what again, we're doing, Joseph. We're underwhelmed, <laughs> but you made it in anyway. <laughs> Amazing. Can't wait to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, after the big Marshall plane crash. <laughs> Go on. The guys who made the team next yeah. year. It's it's still impressive, but it's not as impressive yeah. if the rest of the team was alive That's, from the year before. You're going down in history as a collegiate football player. With an but, asterisk. Right. That's well, really mean, what's too. happening that's here. That's what I mean. All right. Denver Comedy Works. Uh, that'll be where we're at uh, Friday and Saturday. And like I said, uh, Kyle Dunnigan's going to be up on Saturday. So that ought, that ought to be a good one. Uh, speaking of the barbecue, I want to thank uh, Paperback Brewing mm-hmm. and the Lost Abbey Brewing Company as well. Uh, Selfie. Selfie X. X. Selfie oh, X. They were at my wedding. Did yeah, the media. Yeah, it was really yeah, cool. Really cool stuff. Completely pickled Delicious. pickles. Delicious. And uh, is it? Batiste. A oh, Batiste. Sorry, Batiste rum. I'm far away. And of course, Lit, the band for coming in and rocking the joint. Uh, Shannon Elizabeth. The Shannon Elizabeth Foundation is where she can be found. And if you want to do something good, uh, visit ShannonElizabeth.org to learn more. Shoot her on Instagram at Shannon Elizabeth as well. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you for having me. It was fun. We'll do it again. I look forward to it. Oh, I got a quick spot here. We'll see you in Denver coming up. I know you're going. Yeah. Blinds Galore. They're having their massive 4th of July sale, which starts next week. Celebrate with 50% off all custom blinds and shades. Get your free samples today. So you're ready when the big sale starts. That's June 29th. I have them in my home. I have my studio. I have my office. I have my edit bays. It's always blind galore. Save a ton compared to big box stores. Designer look without the designer price tag. Family owned and run for well over 20 years. And uh, you can do it all from your home. Just take the measurements, customize it online, see exactly how your blind or shade will look on screen before you buy. Even connect your shades to your smartphone or your phone or your. they have a remote you can use, your Amazon Alexa. It is Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? Order your free samples today so you'll be ready when Blinds Galore's 4th of July sale starts next, next week and everything will be up to 50% off. Visit BlindsGalore.com today and tell, tell them that Adam sent you. That's BlindsGalore.com. So until next time, Adam Crow for Shannon, Elizabeth, Gina Grad, and Bald Ryan, say it! Mahalo. It's a very anti-social game for a game that involves eight people at the same table. Right. And so, it, yeah, sorry, sometimes it's just your chest. If you can see your chest, you go red. Or if yeah. your leg is bouncing, it's other things wow. that you don't even know you're doing. And then you can think you're covering everything up, I, but you still have a tell. I don't want to see the sombrero or the welder's mask <laughs> right. or the Beats by Dre. You play in your underpants. Oh, I mean, sure. I like pure. It. I'm 